Hello, I'm Chris, and this is my battery isolator wiring diagram video. So I only have about five hours experience messing with this kind of stuff, but I think I got it figured out. This is a Sure Power brand 2403 multi-battery isolator. So we have the option of three batteries. So this is from 1999, but if you look these up, you can still buy one of these for about three or four hundred dollars. Now you see how I have all the wires off of it and I have it rigged up. That's because they cooked this one. And when I say cook, if you wire it up wrong, it's not just going to stop working. It might seem like it's working and then it's going to slowly stop. So what they had done here, they changed the alternator out. And instead of putting it right here, see how that lug is a little off position. That's where the alternator is connected and they had the alternator and the battery connected right there and if you look closely you can see how it's kind of a different color because it was heated up and it was cooked so there's a guy that has a video showing you how to test one of these he does it with a diode on continuity there's a diode right there it's just going to check the electricity in one direction if you look at it in reverse the electricity doesn't flow that way but if we do this it should work see how it's showing some resistance and if we flip these, we'll get the opposite. See how it's showing the diode to work, but it's not on this side. So the diode is still working, but I'm imagining there's more than one and there's a lot more than that going on there because this thing does not work at all. You know, yeah, but I thumbs that guy up and left him a comment. You know, thanks for making videos like that because I never even thought about doing that. But as you can see, it still showed to be working but I promise you this one doesn't or I'd have it all wired up. So I'm gonna draw a very simplified wiring diagram that you can understand in a second, but we just need to see it with our own eyes. See what we're talking about. That's your main battery or one. This is your alternator lug. It's a little offset and then two and three. So we have a battery monitor and we have battery one or two. These are your auxiliary batteries. So battery one is hooked up to the main battery of the car just to test it. And when we hold this down right here, you can see battery two. So this particular monitor monitors two different battery banks, two different circuits. And if you look right here, it's just a ground with two little wires. And these two wires right here would normally go to monitor our two auxiliary batteries. We don't have to monitor our main battery for our engine Ow! because we have a voltmeter here on the vehicle. There we go, now we're charging. So earlier we weren't charging and now you can see we are charging. Let me shut the engine off. See, instantly not charging. So the battery isolator isolates every single battery on its own. So every battery has its own stuff on its circuit. That's the main battery for the engine. Bank one at the top. So this is a 1999 Snap-on truck that was built by Lynch Diversified. I want you to see in there, the only circuit they have fused is going to the lift gate. One of those is to a Honda EV6 to 10 generator. And notice how they ran both of those off of one battery. The other battery, I cannot figure out what it was used for. All right, so we're inside the snap-on truck and those are the wires right there. And I guess they had an inverter, converter. I have no idea. Just learning about this stuff. Showing you it is a Lynch diversified snap-on truck. So we understand that the battery isolator isolates three different batteries so they can have their three different circuits, but it charges them with one wire from the alternator. And this is a heavy duty. 130 140 160 amp i'm not 100 sure and it splits up that charging it's going to release heat and it's going to have a little bit of voltage drop so you have to make 100 sure that your alternator is adequate this is a 200 amp max so if we were going to use a 50 60 amp alternator i doubt we're going to charge all three batteries so if you bought a smaller isolator rated for let's say 50 amps and you're using a 130 amp alternator you're going to cook it so just to be on the safe side, Lynch put a 200 amp max, charging it with 130, 140 amp alternator. So this is not a test prep lecture for engineering students or anything like that. This is for DIY guys and girls that are trying to figure this out for the first time. Okay, so car batteries are very expensive in 2022. And number one is always gonna be your car engine main battery. This is number two. 
for auxiliary. People use these for lights, air horns, whatever, stereo systems. It's just a backup or auxiliary battery. If you're gonna buy a second battery, you wanna buy the same kind of battery. If you wire these in series, you're gonna get 24 volts. So they wire them in parallel when they add more than one battery. So wired in parallel, you're going from positive to positive like that. We still have 12 volts, but we have double battery power. So one of the things that bothers me in automotive wiring is people that show running your negative battery cables to a junction block and joining these all together with fat cable. You don't have to do that on a steel vehicle. That is marine application, fiberglass boats, fiberglass cars. On our vehicles, we have a steel massive conductor on your unibody car. The whole body conducts electricity. So you ground your negative battery to the frame, chassis, wherever you see big fat pieces of metal. You don't have to run negative battery cables. That makes no sense. So now you hook up some big radio, air horns, whatever you do, it pulls a lot of power off the battery. So you added a second one, so you have more battery power. You know, they always teach you to think of the voltage as a water level, and that's exactly what you need to think of it as. So if our battery is full of voltage, you know, so we haven't had our radio on. Both of our batteries are pretty much the same, but we have it wired up to an amp on our extra battery, even though they're both connected. Let's say we're playing our music super loud, and then the voltage goes down in this battery a little bit. So let's say we've been using our amp and this battery's a little bit lower and then we shut everything off. This battery's not gonna stay like that and this one's not gonna stay like that because they're wired together. They're gonna equalize. And whatever that voltage is, 12 and a half here, this one might be 11, they're going to level out. And then we might have 12 here and 12 here. Now, who knows, that's not the point. The point is that when you wire them like that, you have that issue and it's always going to creep up on you when you're not paying attention. And that's what it's doing. It's leveling out. So let's say we were bumping music all night, drinking, partying, and we wake up at four in the morning. And now we have equalized both batteries, 10 volts. Our amp and music is cutting in and out, turning off. And now we already know we're screwed. We can't do anything. We have to find somebody to jump our battery. So the isolator is trying to eliminate this problem and it does a really good job. So this was a 2403 Sure Power 200 amp battery isolator for three batteries. Number one is always your main battery to start your engine on your car or truck. And then two and three auxiliary don't matter. So let's say that you bought one of these and you're trying to figure out how in the world do you wire this up? Let's explain that very easy. On your alternator, you have a big fat wire or the charging wire, battery wire, the biggest fat cable on there usually by itself. You're gonna unhook that wire from wherever it goes, it does not matter, and you're gonna wire it straight to A. No questions asked, it doesn't even matter, just wire it just like that, that's how it's done. So no matter what kind of car or truck you have, it has a starter solenoid already on it. And the starter solenoid has a big fat battery cable running to it. So you don't mess with this in any way whatsoever, you leave that completely alone. But what you have to do now is on your number one or main battery, on your isolator, you have to connect another cable back to the positive side of your battery. And you gotta make sure you're using big fat cables on this. So I'm drawing my own diagram because you see these videos where they use the short power diagram and it has a little dotted line wire that says to remove this wire. That's why I didn't show it to you because I don't even understand why they show that. It even confused me. You are taking that charging wire, the original one that either went to the starter solenoid or it went back to the battery and you're cutting it and removing it and you're adding it to A. So this is exactly how it should look in the vehicle. So your alternator still has the factory plug in it for the gauge, the voltage sensing and all that. You didn't mess with that in any way. You just modified the charging wire. Okay, we have number two auxiliary battery on my truck. It's used for the 1600 pound lift gate and to start the Honda generator. Three auxiliary, I don't have it on there. Use it for whatever you want. So remember we ground to chassis and now on that vehicle out there, they are all three ran to a junction box. I do not like that. I want to individually ground my battery, each one separately. They have them all run three together to a junction block and then ground it to the frame. Do it like this, this is way better. And this is a super duper simple wiring diagram. I just had to make this video so I can get my diagram out there on the internet 
because I try to simplify these for people because there's nothing complicated about this. I figured all this stuff out from scratch, from nothing on my own in a few hours. And you see how my diagrams, they look kind of goofy at first, but they are so simplified. How can you screw this thing up? I don't know. So then we had that old battery monitor. You can't even buy that style anymore. And it had a switch for bank one and two. All this was, was grounded. Okay, so then of course bank one becomes battery two, and then battery two becomes bank three. So in the vehicle, we have a voltmeter and a dummy charging light to monitor the voltage on our main battery one. So this is for three batteries. Obviously, you might have one that only does two batteries, or you can only do two batteries on this one. It doesn't matter. The point is, I just really want to show this wiring part right here, charging wire straight to A position. This has diodes in there, and it's going to distribute the charging to each of the batteries, and each one of these is its own circuit. That's why I was saying I don't even want to ground these together. So the beautiful thing about this with three batteries, obviously, is if our main battery goes dead, we can switch them out, vice versa, whatever. And this is going to eliminate, regardless of what you were doing with your charging system, and finding out you don't even have enough power to crank your engine. So get you a battery isolator. You can't go wrong with them. Very simple wiring diagram. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.